Hello, this is an FNA of a thyroid nodule in a 48-year-old lady, and we can see that it is a highly cellular smear. The cells appear to be quite discohesive, actually, or relatively loosely aggregated. At this magnification, we can also see the occasional very large cell and also binucleated cells. Let's uh, navigate around a little bit. The other interesting thing about this smear is that there is no colloid in the background. Again, we have binucleated cells. And at higher magnification, as we focus up and down, we can actually see that the cells are quite plasma cytoid with eccentric rounded nuclei and uh, moderately abundant pale cytoplasm. Here is another example of a very large and bizarre cell. In the corresponding alcohol-fixed Papa Nicolau stain smear, again we see that it is very cellular. There is actually a suggestion of microfollicular formation in some areas. And again, we can see binucleated cells. Most of the cells are quite polygonal and plump or epithelioid. And we begin to appreciate a bit more of the chromatin as we go on higher magnification. It is quite uniformly dispersed and granular. In this field, there are some large giant multinucleated cells. And here is a good example of a cell where you can see that the chromatin is quite stippled or perhaps having a salt and pepper appearance. And here we actually see a very well-formed intranuclear pseudo-inclusion. Um, probably there's one there as well when we focus up and down. So what we have is a very cellular smear with epithelioid cells, many of which are plasma cytoid. We have some binucleated cells and some multinucleated cells, occasional intranuclear inclusions, and a stippled salt and pepper chromatin. There's also an absence of colloid in the background. So this is a classical appearance of medullary thyroid carcinoma. Medullary thyroid carcinoma, in addition to epithelioid features, can also have a spindle cell appearance. And here is one such example. We can see that the nuclei are elongated and some of the cells have these tapering uh, cytoplasmic processes. Here is another example of a medullary thyroid carcinoma with a spindle cell morphology. And actually, not infrequently, we can sometimes see a mixed pattern of spindle cell as well as epithelioid cells. So here we can see the spindle cells and here in higher magnification. And this is one example of an alcohol-fixed smear where we can actually appreciate the salt and pepper chromatin appearance, which is very, very classical in medullary thyroid carcinoma. As we focus up and down, we can see the chromatin more readily. One other feature that we may sometimes see in the background instead of colloid is this amorphous material, and this is amyloid. So we can actually do a congruent stain on the cell block if it is present. But most of the time, the diagnostic approach is to really focus on the cytomorphology of the cells, especially uh, the very classical salt and pepper nuclear chromatin. So on cytology, can we diagnose medullary thyroid carcinoma definitively? If there is a cell block and we have access to ancillary tests such as calcitonin most specifically or synaptophysin and chromogranin as added tests, we can actually definitively diagnose medullary thyroid carcinoma and put this into the malignant Bethesda category. However, if we do not have the benefit of a cell block and ancillary tests, most of the time we would classify this into the suspicious for malignancy category and uh, write our suspicion that this is medullary thyroid carcinoma, and sometimes we can even suggest uh, uh, serum calcitonin or other ancillary tissue tests to confirm the diagnosis. Some clinical aspects may also be helpful. For example, um, in familial medullary carcinoma or in men's syndrome, the patients may be younger and have multiple tumors. So in summary, the cytologic features of medullary thyroid carcinoma are a spindle cell or epithelioid or combined spindle cell and epithelioid appearance, binucleation, very importantly, salt and pepper stippled chromatin, the absence of colloid, 
and the occasional presence of intranuclear pseudo-inclusions and amyloid. This can be made on ancillary testing on cell block material.